The diplomatic history of World War II includes the major foreign policies and interactions inside the opposing coalitions, the allies of World War II and the Axis powers. The military history of the war is covered at World War II. The pre-war diplomacy is covered in Causes of World War II and International Relations 1919 The United Nations Britain, the United States, the Soviet Union and China were the «Big Four allied powers, who called themselves «the United Nations». They were joined by numerous other countries, such as Canada, and other Commonwealth countries, as well as governments in exile, such as the Free France and the Netherlands. Cairo Conference The Cairo Conference held in Cairo, Egypt, outlined the Allied position against Japan during World War II and made decisions about post-war Asia. The meeting was attended by President of the United States Franklin Roosevelt, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom Winston Churchill, and Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek of the Republic of China. Soviet leader Joseph Stalin did not attend the conference because his meeting with Chiang could have caused friction between the Soviet Union and Japan. Topic: <laughs> Big 3 conferences. Britain, the USSR and the US, were in frequent contact through ambassadors, top generals, foreign ministers and special emissaries such as the American Harry Hopkins. There were numerous high-level conferences, in total Churchill attended 14 meetings, Roosevelt 12, and Stalin 5. Most visible were the three summit conferences that brought together the three top leaders. Topic: Tehran Conference. The first meeting of the Big Three, Stalin, Roosevelt, and Churchill, came at the Tehran Conference in Iran from the 28th of November to the 1st of December 1943. It agreed on an invasion of France in 1944, the Second Front, and dealt with Turkey, Iran, Yugoslavia, and the war against Japan, as well as the post-war settlement. Yalta Conference The Yalta Conference met in the Crimea 4–11 February 1945. It focused on post-war plans for European boundaries. The Soviets already controlled Poland. The new boundaries of Poland were especially important, with Stalin seeking control of western Belarusia and western Ukraine. Poland was to gain parts of Germany. Stalin promised free elections in Poland under the auspices of a government he controlled. At Roosevelt's strong urging, Stalin agreed to enter the war against Japan three months after the defeat of Germany. It was agreed the USSR would be a member of the United Nations Security Council, with a veto, and Ukraine and Belarus would be UN members, but not the other 12 Soviet republics. Germany was to be divided into three zones of occupation, and France was also to get a zone. In a decision that became highly controversial, all civilians would be repatriated. Topic. Potsdam Conference 
The Potsdam Conference was held from 17 July to 2 August 1945, at Potsdam, Germany, near Berlin. Stalin met with the new U.S. President Harry S. Truman and two British Prime Ministers in succession—Winston Churchill and Clement Attlee. It demanded, "...unconditional surrender." from Japan, and finalized arrangements for Germany to be occupied and controlled by the Allied Control Commission. The status of other occupied countries was discussed in line with the basic agreements made earlier at Yalta. <laughs> Dumbarton Oaks Conference The Dumbarton Oaks Conference or, more formally, the Washington Conversations on International Peace and Security Organization was an international conference at which the United Nations was formulated and negotiated among international leaders. The conference was held at Dumbarton Oaks from 21 August 1944 to 7 October 1944. At the conference, delegations from the Soviet Union, the United Kingdom, the United States and the Republic of China deliberated over proposals for the establishment of an organization to maintain peace and security in the world. Topic: San Francisco Conference. San Francisco Conference was a convention of delegates from 50 Allied nations that took place from 25 April 1945 to 26 June 1945 in San Francisco, United States. At this convention, the delegates reviewed and rewrote the Dumbarton Oaks Agreements. The convention resulted in the creation of the United Nations Charter, which was opened for signature on the 26th of June. The heads of the delegations of the four sponsoring countries, China, Britain, the United States and the Soviet Union, took turns as chairman of the plenary meetings. Topic: Britain, United States. Though most Americans favored Britain in the war, there was widespread opposition to American military intervention in European affairs. President Roosevelt's policy of cash and carry still allowed Britain and France to purchase munitions from the United States and carry them home. Churchill, who had long warned against Germany and demanded rearmament, became Prime Minister after Chamberlain's policy of appeasement had totally collapsed and Britain was unable to reverse the German invasion of Norway in April 1940. After the fall of France Roosevelt gave Britain all aid short of war. The Destroyers for Bases Agreement of September 1940, gave the United States a 99-year lease on strategically located bases in the Atlantic in exchange for the Royal Navy receiving 50 old destroyers to use in anti-submarine warfare. Roosevelt also sold for cash munitions that were carried away in British ships, including over half a million rifles, 85,000 machine guns, 25,000 automatic rifles, mortars, hundreds of field guns, with supplies of the necessary ammunition. The British needed these munitions to re-equip the soldiers who lost all their arms when Dunkirk was evacuated in June 1940. Beginning in March 1941, the United States enacted Lend-Lease sending tanks, warplanes, munitions, ammunition, food, and medical supplies. Britain received $31.4 billion out of a total of $50.1 billion of supplies sent to the Allies. 
In sharp contrast to the First World War, these were not loans and no repayment was involved. Millions of American servicemen were based in Britain during the war, which led to a certain amount of friction with British men and intermarriage with British women. This animosity was explored in art and film, most particularly A Matter of Life and Death and A Canterbury Tale. In 1945 Churchill sent a British fleet to help the United States attack and invade Japan. <laughs> Casablanca Conference From January 14 to 24, 1943 Roosevelt, Churchill and the combined staff met in Casablanca, Morocco. They decided on the major Allied strategy for 1943 in Europe, especially the invasion of Italy and planning for the invasion of France. At Roosevelt's suggestion they agreed on a policy of unconditional surrender. This policy uplifted Allied morale, but it also made the Nazis resolve to fight to the bitter end. Roosevelt also tried to establish a working relationship between the two main French allies, Henry Giraud, the French High Commissioner in North Africa, and General de Gaulle, leader of the Free French. Topic: Britain. Britain's declaration of war against Germany in September 1939 included the Crown Colonies and India, which it directly controlled. The Dominions were independent in foreign policy but all of them Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and South Africa soon declared war on Germany. The fears in London that South Africa would take the advice of Prime Minister J. B. M. Herzog and remain neutral were relieved when the Parliament voted 80-67 for war, and Herzog resigned. After the French defeat in June 1940, Britain and its empire stood alone in combat against Germany, until June 1941. The United States gave strong diplomatic, financial and material support, starting in 1940, especially through Lend-Lease, which began in 1941. In August 1941, Churchill and Roosevelt met and agreed on the Atlantic Charter, which proclaimed the rights of all peoples to choose the form of government under which they live should be respected. This wording was ambiguous and would be interpreted differently by the British, Americans, and nationalist movements. Starting in December 1941, Japan overran British possessions in Asia, including Hong Kong, Malaya, and especially the key base at Singapore, and marched into Burma, headed toward India. Churchill's reaction to the entry of the United States into the war was that Britain was now assured of victory and the future of the empire was safe, but the rapid defeats irreversibly harmed Britain's standing and prestige as an imperial power. The realisation that Britain could not defend and pushed Australia and New Zealand into permanent close ties with the United States. Topic. India Serious tension erupted over American demands that India be given independence, a proposition Churchill vehemently rejected. For years Roosevelt had encouraged Britain's disengagement from India. The American position was based on principled opposition to colonialism, practical concern for the outcome of the war, and the expectation of a large American role in a post-colonial era. 
However, in 1942 when the Congress Party launched a Quit India movement, the British authorities immediately arrested tens of thousands of activists, including Jawaharlal Nehru and Mahatma Gandhi, and imprisoned them until 1945. Meanwhile, India became the main American staging base for aid to China. Churchill threatened to resign if Roosevelt pushed too hard regarding independence, so Roosevelt backed down. Topic: <inaudible> Britain and France. In spring 1939, both Britain and France formally announced they would defend the integrity of Poland. Hitler did not believe they would fight in such a faraway hopeless cause, and he invaded Poland on September 1, 1939. Britain and France declared war on September 3, 1939. But there was little they could or did do to help Poland. Topic. Plans for intervention in the Winter War against USSR The USSR launched the Winter War against Finland in November 1939. The Finns made a remarkable defense against the much larger Soviet forces. The unprovoked invasion excited widespread outrage at popular and elite levels in support of Finland not only in wartime Britain and France but also in neutral United States. The League of Nations declared the USSR was the aggressor and expelled it. American opinion makers treated the attack on Finland as dastardly aggression worthy of daily headlines, which thereafter exacerbated attitudes toward Russia. Elite opinion in Britain and France swung in favor of military intervention. Winston Churchill, as head of the Royal Navy, and French Premier Paul Reynaud were the chief advocates. It came when there was a military stalemate on the continent called the Phony War. Months of planning at the highest civilian, military and diplomatic levels in London and Paris, saw multiple reversals and deep divisions. Finally the British and French agreed on a plan that involved uninvited invasions of neutral Norway, Sweden, Iceland, and Denmark's Faroe Islands, with the goals chiefly of damaging the German war economy and also assisting Finland in its war with the Soviet Union. An Allied war against the Soviet Union was part of the plan, the actual Allied goal was not to help Finland but to engage in economic warfare against Germany by cutting off shipments of Swedish iron ore, which they calculated would seriously weaken German war industry. The British Ministry of Economic Warfare stated that the project against Norway would be likely to cause an extremely serious repercussion on German industrial output Dotton would in any case have a profound effect on the duration of the war. The idea was to shift forces away from doing little on the static Western Front into an active role on a new front. The British military leadership by December became enthusiastic supporters when they realized that their first choice, an attack on German oil supplies, would not get approval but this plan would win strong support. The poor performance of the Soviet army against the Finns strengthened the confidence of the Allies that the invasion, and the resulting war with Russia, would be worthwhile. However the civilian leadership of Neville Chamberlain's government in London drew back and postponed invasion plans. The neutrals refused to cooperate. Meanwhile, Finland was overwhelmed and gave in to Moscow on 13 March 1940 and the plan was postponed. 
War plans against the USSR were dropped and the new goal was to mine the Norwegian coast to prevent the passage of ships carrying iron ore from northern Norway. There were more delays and when mining operations finally started on 9 April it was too late. The Germans hours before had invaded Norway and had the upper hand in the Norwegian campaign. Topic: German invasion 1940. When Germany began its attack on France in April 1940, British troops and French troops again fought side by side, but defeat came quickly. The Royal Navy evacuated 198,000 British and 140,000 French soldiers in the Dunkirk evacuation in late May, early June 1940. Tens of thousands of tanks, trucks and artillery guns were left behind, as well as all of the radios, machine guns, rifles, tents, spare parts and other gear. The new Prime Minister Winston Churchill pledged that Britain would continue to fight for France's freedom, even if it must do so alone. After Mers el Kabir, Britain recognized Free France as its ally and the legitimate government of France. The United States maintained diplomatic relations with Vichy until late 1942 and avoided recognition of de Gaulle's claim to be the one and only government of France. Churchill, caught between the U.S. and de Gaulle, tried to find a compromise. Topic. Britain and Soviet Union In October 1944 Churchill and his foreign minister Antony Eden met in Moscow with Stalin and his foreign minister Molotov. They planned who would control what in post-war Eastern Europe. They agreed to give 90% of the influence in Greece to Britain and 90% in Romania to USSR. USSR gained an 80%, 20% division in Bulgaria and Hungary. There was a 50-50 division in Yugoslavia, and no Soviet share in Italy. Middle East Topic <inaudible> Iraq Iraq was an independent country in 1939 with a strong British presence especially in the oil fields Iraq broke relations with Germany but there was a strong pro-German element the regime of Regent Abd al-Ila was overthrown in 1941 by the Golden Square pro-Nazi army officers, headed by Rashid Ali. The short-living pro-Nazi government was overpowered in May 1941 by British forces in Anglo-Iraqi war and the regent returned to power. Iraq was later used as a base for Allied attacks on Vichy French held mandate of Syria and support for the Anglo-Soviet invasion of Iran. Topic: <inaudible> Iran Persia In 1939 the dictator of Iran was Shah Reza Pahlavi, an army officer who took control in a coup d'etat in 1925 and called himself Shah. He was a modernizer who had little use for traditional religion, but collaborated with the Germans. Iran proclaimed neutrality when the war began in 1939. British and Soviet forces occupied Iran in August 1941, deposed the Shah, and installed his son Mohammad Reza Shah Pahlavi. 
Iran, with a largely rural population of 13 million, had oil wells and became a major route for shipping military supplies from the U.S. to the Soviet Union. At the Tehran Conference of 1943 Stalin, Roosevelt and Churchill issued the Tehran Declaration that guaranteed the post-war independence and boundaries of Iran. However, when the war actually ended, Soviet troops stationed in northwestern Iran not only refused to withdraw but backed revolts that established short-lived, pro-Soviet separatist national states in the northern regions of Azerbaijan and Iranian Kurdistan. The Azerbaijan People's Government and the Republic of Kurdistan respectively, in late 1945, Soviet troops did not withdraw from Iran proper until May 1946 after receiving a promise of oil concessions. The Soviet republics in the north were soon overthrown and the oil concessions were revoked. Topic: <laughs> Commonwealth The British Dominions joined in the September 3rd declaration of war, except for Canada. In a symbolic statement of autonomous foreign policy, Prime Minister William Leon Mackenzie King delayed Parliament's vote on a declaration of war until September 10. Britain generally handled the diplomatic relations of the Commonwealth nations. Canada hosted top-level conferences between Britain and the U.S., but did not itself participate in the formal discussions. Australia, however, felt abandoned by London and moved to a close relationship with the U.S., playing a support role in the American war against Japan. Australian Prime Minister John Curtin stated, I make it clear that Australia looks to America, free of any pangs as to our traditional links or kinship with the United Kingdom. U.S. President Roosevelt ordered General Douglas MacArthur, to move the American base from the Philippines to Brisbane, Australia. By September 1943, more than 120,000 American soldiers were in Australia. The Americans were warmly welcomed but there was some tensions. MacArthur worked very closely with the Australian government and took command of its combat operations. Fighting continued throughout Southeast Asia for the next two years. When the European war was declared over, Australia and the US still had a war to win against Japan. MacArthur promoted a policy of island hopping for his American troops while he suggested that the Australian troops should continue clearing and rounding up the Japanese from New Guinea, New Britain, Borneo and Bougainville. Topic: United States. President Roosevelt tried to avoid repeating what he saw as Woodrow Wilson's mistakes in World War I. Wilson called for neutrality in thought and deed, while Roosevelt made it clear his administration strongly favored Britain and China. Unlike the loans in World War I, the United States made large-scale grants of military and economic aid to the Allies through Lend-Lease, with little expectation of repayment. Wilson did not greatly expand war production before the declaration of war, Roosevelt did. After Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, Guam, Wake Island, the Philippines, Malaya, Singapore, and Hong Kong on December 7, 1941 Congress declared war on Japan the following day, December 8, 1941. Roosevelt often mentioned his role in the Wilson administration, but added that he had profited more from Wilson's errors than from his successes. Topic. 
1941–42 After Pearl Harbor, anti-war sentiment in the United States evaporated overnight, the nation was now united on foreign policy. On December 11, 1941, Germany and Italy declared war on the United States, which responded in kind. Roosevelt and his military advisers implemented a war strategy with the objectives of halting the German advances in the Soviet Union and in North Africa, launching an invasion of Western Europe with the aim of crushing Nazi Germany between two fronts, and saving China and defeating Japan. Public opinion, however, gave priority to the destruction of Japan, so American forces were sent chiefly to the Pacific in 1942. In the opening weeks of the war, Japan had conquered the Philippines, and the British and Dutch colonies in Southeast Asia, capturing Singapore in February 1942. Furthermore, Japan cut off the overland supply route to China. The United States flew supplies to China over the hump, the Himalayan mountains, at enormous cost, until a road could be opened in 1945. Roosevelt met with Churchill in late December and planned a broad informal alliance among the U.S., Britain, China and the Soviet Union. This included Churchill's initial plan to invade North Africa called Operation Gymnast and the primary plan of the U.S. generals for a Western Europe invasion, focused directly on Germany Operation Sledgehammer. An agreement was also reached for a centralized command and offensive in the Pacific theater called ABDA American, British, Dutch, Australian, to save China and defeat Japan. Nevertheless, the Atlantic First strategy was intact, to Churchill's great satisfaction. On New Year's Day 1942, Churchill and FDR issued the Declaration by United Nations, representing 26 countries in opposition to the Tripartite Pact of Germany, Italy and Japan. China In 1931 Japan took advantage of China's very weak central government in the warlord era and fabricated the Mukden incident in 1931 to set up the puppet state of Manchukuo in Manchuria. Puyi, who had been the last emperor of China, became emperor of China again, he was a Japanese puppet. In 1937 the Marco Polo Bridge incident triggered the Second Sino-Japanese War. The invasion was launched by the bombing of many cities such as Shanghai, Nanjing and Guangzhou. The latest, which began on 22 and 23 September 1937, called forth widespread protests culminating in a resolution by the Far Eastern Advisory Committee of the League of Nations. The Imperial Japanese Army captured the Chinese capital city of Nanjing, and committed war crimes in the Nanjing Massacre. The war tied down large numbers of Chinese soldiers, so Japan set up three different Chinese puppet states to enlist some Chinese support. The United States was a strong supporter of China after Japan invaded in 1937. Even the isolationists who opposed war in Europe supported a hard line against Japan. The outbreak of the Second Sino-Japanese War in 1937 saw aid flow into the Republic of China, led by Chiang Kai-shek. American public sympathy for the Chinese was aroused by reports from missionaries, novelists such as Pearl Buck, and Time magazine of Japanese brutality in China, including reports surrounding the Nanking Massacre, also known as the Rape of Nanking. 
Japanese-American relations were further soured by the USS Panay incident during the bombing of Nanjing. Roosevelt demanded an apology from the Japanese, which was received, but relations between the two countries continued to deteriorate. By early 1941 the U.S. was preparing to send American planes flown by American pilots under American command, but wearing Chinese uniforms, to fight the Japanese invaders and even to bomb Japanese cities. The Flying Tigers, under Claire Chenault arrived just as the U.S. entered the war, to augment Chenault's 100 P-40Bs. In May 1941 Washington decided to send 144 Vulti P-48s, 125 P-43s and 66 Lockheed and Douglas medium bombers. The goal was to give China by early 1942, a respectable air force, judged by Far Eastern standards, sufficient to a protect strategic points, b permit local army offensive action, c permit the bombing of Japanese air bases and supply dumps in China and Indochina, and the bombing of coastal and river transport, and d permit occasional incendiary bombing of Japan. A year before the U.S. officially entered the war after December 7, 1941, Chenault developed an ambitious plan for a sneak attack on Japanese bases. His Flying Tigers would use American bombers and American pilots, all with Chinese markings. The U.S. military was opposed to his scheme, and kept raising obstacles, but it was adopted by top civilian officials including Henry Morgenthau Jr. the Secretary of the Treasury who financed China, and especially President Roosevelt himself, who made it a high priority to keep China alive. By October, 1941, bombers and crews were on their way to China. However the American attack never took place. The bombers and crews arrived after Pearl Harbor and were used for the war in Burma, for they lacked the range to reach China. <laughs> <laughs> Wartime After the formal declaration of war in December 1941, the U.S. stepped up the flow of aid, but it had to be routed through India and over the Himalayan mountains because Japan blocked the other routes. Chang's beleaguered government was now headquartered in remote Chongqing. Madame Chiang Kai-shek, who had been educated in the United States, addressed the U.S. Congress and toured the country to rally support for China. Congress amended the Chinese Exclusion Act and Roosevelt moved to end the unequal treaties. However, the perception that Chang's government, with his poorly equipped and ill-fed troops was unable to effectively fight the Japanese or that he preferred to focus more on defeating the communists grew. China hands such as Joseph Stilwell argued that it was in American interest to establish communication with the communists to prepare for a land-based counteroffensive invasion of Japan. The Dixie Mission, which began in 1943, was the first official American contact with the Communists. Other Americans, such as Claire Chenault, argued for air power. In 1944, Generalissimo Chang acceded to Roosevelt's request that an American general take charge of all forces in the area, but demanded that Stilwell be recalled. General Albert Wedemeyer replaced Stilwell, Patrick Hurley became ambassador, and as China relations became much smoother. After World War II ended in 1945, the showdown came between the nationalists and the communists in a full-scale civil war. American General George C. Marshall tried to broker a truce but he failed. 
the Kuomintang nationalist military position steadily worsened and by 1949, the Communists were victorious and drove the nationalists from the mainland onto the island of Taiwan and other islands. Mao Zedong established the People's Republic of China PRC, in mainland China, while the Republic of China remains in Taiwan to this day. <inaudible> Soviet Union Joseph Stalin controlled the foreign policy of the Soviet Union, with Vyacheslav Molotov as his foreign minister. Their policy was neutrality until August 1939. The Soviet military had conversations in Moscow with a high-level military delegation from Britain and France. The Soviets demanded an agreement from Poland to allow Soviet troops to enter that country to defend it against Germany, but Poland refused. Those talks went nowhere. On August 21, Hitler made friendly proposals to Stalin that led to the Molotov-Ribbentrop non-aggression pact on August 23 that stunned the world. The Soviets achieved friendly relations with Germany in order to carve up key elements of Eastern Europe, especially Poland and the Baltic states. Following the pact, Germany invaded and quickly defeated Poland, then the Soviets invaded and took control of its pre-assigned areas of Eastern Poland. Both invaders systematically decimated the Polish elite. In the 1940 Katyn massacre, the NKVD Soviet secret police executed 22,000 Polish military and police officers and civilian intelligentsia. For the next two years, the USSR supplied Germany with oil and grain. Furthermore, the Kremlin ordered communist parties around the world to denounce the imperialistic war waged by Britain and France against Germany. For example, B. Farnborough says, "...during the entire period up to the fall of France the British Communist Party functioned as a propaganda agency for Hitler." After he ignored repeated warnings, Stalin was stunned when Hitler invaded in June 1941. Stalin eventually came to terms with Britain and the United States, cemented through a series of summit meetings. The US and Britain supplied war materials through Lend-Lease. There was some coordination of military action, especially in summer 1944. At war's end it was doubtful whether Stalin would allow free elections in Eastern Europe. The central diplomatic issue was future of allies, and as it turned out this Soviet-Western alliance was not a permanent one. <laughs> France <laughs> French Republic France and Britain collaborated closely in 1939, and together declared war against Germany two days after it invaded Poland. Apart from the British dominions Canada, Australia, New Zealand and South Africa, no independent nation joined their cause. Britain and France took a defensive posture, fearing German air attacks on cities. France hoped the Maginot Line would protect it from an invasion. There was little fighting between the fall of Poland in mid-September and the following spring, it was the phony war in Britain or Droll de Guerre, the funny sort of war, in France. Britain tried several peace feelers, but Hitler did not respond. When Germany had its hands free for an attack in the West, it launched its blitzkrieg against Denmark and Norway, easily pushing the British out. 
Then it invaded the Low Countries and tricked Britain and France into sending its best combat units deep into the Netherlands, where they became trapped in the Battle of France in May 1940. The Royal Navy rescued over 300,000 British and French soldiers from Dunkirk, but left behind all the equipment. Vichy France Topic: Relationships with Germany Paris fell to the Germans on 14 June 1940, and the government surrendered in the armistice of 22 June 1940 with new new leader Marshal Philippe Pétain His Vichy regime was authoritarian, Catholic, paternal and anti-Semitic. His charisma and popularity from his heroic role in the First World War strengthened his authority, although he was increasingly too old to pay attention to details. After Germany seized all of Vichy in October 1942, it installed Pierre Laval as its puppet leaving Pétain as a helpless figurehead. The armistice included numerous provisions that weakened France, all largely guaranteed by the German policy of keeping two million French prisoners of war and workers in Germany as hostages. Vichy France was nominally a neutral country. It never declared war on the Soviet Union or Britain, and was recognized diplomatically by the United States until 1942. Although Vichy France was nominally in control of all of France—apart from Alsace-Lorraine—in practice the Germans controlled three-fifths of the country, including the northern and western coasts, the industrial northeast, and the Paris region. The Pétain government relocated to the resort town of Invichy and controlled the rest from the start. Germany wanted food, minerals, and industrial productions, as well as volunteers to work in German factories. Vichy was allowed to control its foreign colonies to the extent it could defend them against the Free French as well as its fleet, to the extent it could defend it against British naval attacks. In October 1942, Germany took it all over, the Vichy regime became entirely a puppet of the German occupiers. The small town of montois sur la loya was the scene of two meetings. On October 22, 1940, Pierre Laval met with Hitler to set up a meeting on October 24 between Hitler and Pétain. It ended in a much-publicized handshake between the two, but in fact the discussions had been entirely general and no decisions had been made. Hitler was impressed with Pétain's commitment to defending the French Empire. False rumors abounded that France had made major concessions regarding colonies and German control of French ports and the French feet. Germany controlled the entire French economy, and demanded huge reparations in gold and food. However nearly two million French soldiers became prisoners of war in Germany. They served as hostages and forced laborers in German factories. Vichy was intensely conservative and anti-communist, but it was practically helpless. Vichy finally collapsed when the Germans fled in summer 1944. The United States granted Vichy full diplomatic recognition, sending Admiral William D. Leahy to Paris as American ambassador. President Roosevelt hoped to use American influence to encourage those elements in the Vichy government opposed to military collaboration with Germany. 
Vichy still controlled its overseas colonies and Washington encouraged Vichy to resist German demands such as for air bases in Syria or to move war supplies through French North Africa. The essential American position was that France should take no action not explicitly required by the armistice terms that could adversely affect Allied efforts in the war. When Germany took full control, the US and Canada cut their ties with Vichy. By 1942, Germany was demanding that Vichy turn over the Jews for deportation to German concentration camps. Reluctantly at first, then more enthusiastically, Vichy complied. They turned over 80,000 of the 330,000 French and foreign Jews living in Vichy, the Germans killed 77,000. When Germany tried to seize the French fleet at Toulon in November, 1942, the French Navy scuttled all its ships. French fleet Britain feared that the powerful French navy could end up in German hands and be used against its own naval forces, which were so vital to maintaining North Atlantic shipping and communications. Under the armistice, France had been allowed to retain the French navy, the Marine Nationale, under strict conditions. Vichy pledged that the fleet would never fall into the hands of Germany, but refused to send the fleet beyond Germany's reach by sending it to Britain or to faraway territories of the French Empire such as the West Indies. Shortly after France gave up it attacked a large French naval contingent in Mers el Kabir, killing 1,297 French military personnel. Vichy severed diplomatic relations but did not declare war on Britain. Churchill also ordered French ships in British ports to be seized by the Royal Navy. The French squadron at Alexandria, Egypt, under Admiral René Emile Godfroy, was effectively interned until 1943. The American position towards Vichy France and Free France was inconsistent. President Roosevelt disliked and distrusted de Gaulle, and agreed with Ambassador Leahy's view that he was an «apprentice dictator». <laughs> North Africa Preparing for a landing in North Africa in late 1942, the U.S. looked for a top French ally. It turned to Henry Giraud shortly before the landing on 8 November 1942, but he had little local support. By hapstance the Vichy leader Admiral François Darlin was captured and supported the Americans. The Allies, with General Dwight D. Eisenhower in charge, signed a deal with Admiral Darlin on the 22nd of November 1942, in which the Allies recognized Darlin as High Commissioner for North Africa and West Africa. The Allied world was stunned at giving a high command to man who days before had been collaborating with the Nazis. Roosevelt and Churchill supported Eisenhower, for he was following a plan that had been worked out in London and had been approved by Roosevelt and Churchill. Darlin was assassinated on 24 December 1942, so Washington turned again towards Giraud, who was made High Commissioner of French North and West Africa. Giraud failed to build a political base and was displaced by the last man with any standing, de Gaulle. Topic. Free France. Free France was the insurgent French government based in London and the overseas French colonies and led by charismatic General Charles de Gaulle. 
de Gaulle had been a Secretary of State in the last constitutional government in the French Third Republic. From London on 18 June 1940 he gave an impassioned radio address exhorting the patriotic French people to resist Nazi Germany he organised the Free French Forces from soldiers that had escaped with the British at Dunkirk. With British military support the Free French gradually gained control of all French colonies except Indochina, which the Japanese controlled. The US, Britain and Canada wanted Vichy to keep nominal control of the small islands of Saint-Pierre and Miquelon for reasons of prestige, but de Gaulle seized him anyway in late 1941, when the British and Americans landed in France in June 1944 de Gaulle headed a government in exile based in London, but he continued to create diplomatic problems for the US and Britain. He refused to allow French soldiers to land on D-Day, and insisted that France be treated as a great power by the other Allies, and that he himself was the only representative of France. Churchill, caught between the US and de Gaulle, tried to find a compromise. The US and Britain allowed de Gaulle the honor of being the first to march into Paris at the head of his army after the Germans had fled. Topic: <inaudible> Neutrals. The main neutrals were Ireland, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland and Turkey. The Soviet Union was officially neutral until June 1941 in Europe and until August 1945 in Asia when it attacked Japan in cooperation with the US. Topic: <laughs> Latin America The U.S. believed, falsely, that Germany had a master plan to subvert and take control of the economy of much of South America. Washington made anti-Nazi activity a high priority in the region. By July 1941, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt authorized the creation of the Office of the Coordinator of Inter-American Affairs in response to perceived propaganda efforts in Latin America by Germany and Italy. Through the use of news, film and radio broadcast media in the United States, Roosevelt sought to enhance his good neighbor policy, promote Pan-Americanism and forestall military hostility in Latin America through the use of cultural diplomacy. Three countries actively joined the war effort, while others passively broke relations or nominally declared war. Cuba declared war in December 1941 and actively helped in the defense of the Panama Canal. It did not send forces to Europe. Mexico declared war on Germany in 1942 after U boats sank Mexican tankers carrying crude oil to the United States. It sent a 300 man fighter squadron to the war against Japan in 1945. Brazil declared war against Germany and Italy on the 22nd of August 1942 and sent a 25,700-man infantry force that fought mainly on the Italian front from September 1944 to May 1945. Its navy and air force acted in the Atlantic Ocean. Topic Argentina Argentina hosted a strong, very well-organized pro-Nazi element before the war that was controlled by German ambassadors. Brazil, Chile and Mexico had smaller movements. American foreign policy worked to unite all of Latin America in a coalition against Germany. Argentina proved recalcitrant, and the U.S. worked to undermine the Argentine government. 
The American policy backfired when the military seized power in a coup in 1943. Relationships grew worse to the point that Washington seriously considered economic and diplomatic isolation of Argentina and tried unsuccessfully to keep it out of the United Nations in 1945. Historians now agree that the supposed affinity between Argentina and Germany was greatly exaggerated. The Argentine government remained neutral until the last days of the war but quietly tolerated entry of Nazi leaders fleeing Germany, Belgium, and Vichy France in 1945. Indeed, a conspiracy theory grew up after the war that greatly exaggerated the Nazi numbers and amount of gold they brought. Historians have shown there was little gold and probably not many Nazis, but the myths live on. <laughs> Baltic states Despite declaring neutrality the Baltic states were secretly assigned to the Soviet sphere of influence via the Molotov–Ribbentrop Pact and subsequently occupied by the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany. Diplomatic legations continued to represent the Baltic states throughout the period. The United States never recognized control by Germans or USSR. Ireland Ireland tried to be strictly neutral during the war, and refused to allow Britain to use bases. However it had large sales of exports to Britain, and tens of thousands joined the British armed forces. Portugal. Portugal controlled strategically vital Azores islands in the Atlantic, and Britain and the US made plans called Operation Alacrity to invade them if necessary. Portugal although it had an alliance with Britain was officially neutral, its highest goal was to avoid a German invasion. Its dictator Salazar collaborated with the British and sold them rubber and tungsten. Wolfram. In late 1943 he allowed the Allies to establish air bases in the Azores to fight U-boats. He helped Spain avoid German control. Tungsten was a major product, and he sold to Germany. He stopped in June 1944, when the threat of a German invasion of Portugal was no longer possible. He worked to regain control of East Timor after the Japanese seized it. He admitted several thousand Jewish refugees. Lisbon maintained air connections with Britain and the U.S. Lisbon was a hotbed of spies and served as the base for the International Red Cross in its distribution of relief supplies to POWs held by Germany. The Quakers and other peace groups used it as a base for their aid to refugees. Spain Nazi leaders spent much of the war attempting to persuade the Franco regime to enter the war and allow a German army to march on Gibraltar. The overtures proved futile. Franco was sympathetic but remained emphatically neutral. However, Spain did need to pay off its heavy debt to Germany. Therefore, Franco did provide various kinds of support to Italy and Germany. It sold Germany supplies, especially Wolfram, the hard-to-find tungsten ore. It formed 45,000 volunteers into the Blue Division, which fought exclusively on the Eastern Front. Spain was neutral and traded as well with the Allies. 
Germany had an interest in seizing the key fortress of Gibraltar, but Franco stationed his army at the French border to dissuade Germany from occupying the Iberian Peninsula. Franco displayed pragmatism and his determination to act principally in Spanish interests, in the face of Allied economic pressure, Axis military demands, and Spain's geographic isolation. As the war progressed he became more hardline toward Germany and more accommodating to the Allies. Sweden At the outbreak of war between Germany and Poland, Britain and France in September 1939, Sweden declared neutrality. At outbreak of war in November between Finland and the Soviet Union, Sweden declared, non belligerent to make it possible to support Finland with arms and volunteers in the Winter War. From 13 December to the end of the war, a national unity government under Prime Minister Per Alban Hansen and Foreign Minister Christian Gunther was formed that included all major parties in the Riksdag. From April 1940 Sweden and Finland was encircled between the Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union and subject to both British and German blockades. In spring-summer 1940 the United States stopped delivery of fighter aircraft to Sweden. Sweden made concessions to both Allies and Germany. It held that that neutrality and cooperation with Germany were necessary for survival, for Germany was vastly more powerful, concessions were limited and were only made where the threat was too great, neutrality was bent but not broken, national unity was paramount, and in any case Sweden had the neutral right to trade with Germany. Germany needed Swedish iron and had nothing to gain and much iron to lose by an invasion as a free country refugees from finland norway denmark and the baltic states fled to sweden during the war during the last part of the war it was possible to save some victims from german concentration camps topic switzerland Switzerland was neutral and did business with both sides. It mobilized its army to defend itself against any invasion. The Germans did make plans, but never invaded. Cut off from the Allies, Swiss trade was mostly with Germany, with Swiss banks a favorite place for Nazis to store their loot. The Swiss depended on German permission to import its food and fuel. Smuggling high-precision tools and weapons, such as jewel bearings, diamond dyes, and chronographs, to Britain took place on a large scale. Switzerland became a convenient center for spies and espionage. Swiss banks paid Germany 1.3 billion Swiss francs for gold. Germany used the francs to buy supplies on the world market. However much of the gold was looted and the Allies warned Switzerland during the war. In 1947 Switzerland paid 250 million francs in exchange for the dropping of claims relating to the Swiss role in the gold transactions. Switzerland took in 48,000 refugees during the war, of whom 20,000 were Jewish. They also turned away about 40,000 applicants for refugee status. Switzerland's role regarding Nazi Germany became highly controversial in the 1990s. Wiley says, Switzerland has been widely condemned for its part in the war. 
It has been accused of abetting genocide, by refusing to offer sanctuary to Hitler's victims, bankrolling the Nazi war economy, and callously profiting from Hitler's murderous actions by seizing the assets of those who perished in the death camps. On the other hand, Churchill told his foreign minister in late 1944, of all the neutrals, Switzerland has the great right to distinction. She has been the sole international force linking the hideous sundered nations and ourselves. What does it matter whether she has been able to give us the commercial advantages we desire or has given too many to the German, to keep herself alive? She has been a democratic state, standing for freedom in self-defense among her mountains, and in thought, despite of race, largely on our side. Turkey Turkey was neutral in the war, but signed a treaty with Britain and France in October 1939 that said the Allies would defend Turkey if Germany attacked it. The deal was enhanced with loans of 41 million liras. An invasion was threatened in 1941 but did not happen and Ankara refused German requests to allow troops to cross its borders into Syria or into the USSR. Germany had been its largest trading partner before the war, and Turkey continued to do business with both sides. It purchased arms from both sides. The Allies tried to stop German purchases of chrome, used in making better steel. Starting in 1942 the Allies provided military aid and pressed for a declaration of war. Turkey's president conferred with Roosevelt and Churchill at the Cairo Conference in November, 1943, and promised to enter the war when it was fully armed. By August 1944, with Germany nearing defeat, Turkey broke off relations. In February 1945, it declared war on Germany and Japan, a symbolic move that allowed Turkey to join the future United Nations. Meanwhile, relations with Moscow worsened, setting stage for the Truman Doctrine of 1947 and the start of the Cold War. Topic. Axis The dictators of Germany and Italy, Hitler and Mussolini, had numerous conferences. Neither ever met with top Japanese leaders. The Japanese ambassador to Germany handled many of the negotiations between Germany and Japan, but his coded messages home were intercepted and decrypted by the United States starting in 1941. The U.S. shared them with Britain. They revealed important German plans. Topic. Germany. Germany's foreign policy during the war involved the creation of Allied governments under direct or indirect control from Berlin. A main goal was obtaining soldiers from the senior Allies, such as Italy and Hungary, and millions of workers and ample food supplies from subservient Allies such as Vichy France. By the fall of 1942, there were 24 divisions from Romania on the Eastern Front, 10 from Italy and 10 from Hungary. When a country was no longer dependable, Germany would assume full control, as it did with France in 1942, Italy in 1943, and Hungary in 1944. Full control allowed the Nazis to achieve their high priority of mass murdering all Jewish population. 
Although Japan was officially a powerful ally, the relationship was distant and there was little coordination or cooperation, such as Germany's refusal to share the secret formula for making synthetic oil from coal until late in the war. Dinardo argues that in Europe Germany's foreign policy was dysfunctional during the war, as Hitler treated each ally separately, and refused to create any sort of combined staff that would synchronize policies, armaments, and strategies. Italy, Finland, Romania, and Hungary each dealt with Berlin separately, and never coordinated their activities. Germany was reluctant to share its powerful weapons systems, or to train Axis officers. There were some exceptions, such as the close collaboration between the German and Italian forces in North Africa. Hitler Hitler devoted most of his attention during the war to military and diplomatic affairs. He frequently met with foreign leaders, such as the January 10, 1943 he met with Romanian Premier Marshal Ion Antonescu at German field headquarters, with top-ranking generals on both sides. On 9 August 1943, Hitler summoned Tsar Boris III of Bulgaria to a stormy meeting at field headquarters, and demanded he declare war on Russia. The Tsar refused, but did agree to declare war on faraway Britain. American news reports stated that Hitler tried to hit him and the Tsar suffered a heart attack at the meeting. He died three weeks later. Topic. Forced labor German policy was not to use or build factories in occupied Eastern Europe but to move millions of workers into German factories and farms. Some were forced, some went voluntarily going in search of food, and others were prisoners of war. They were closely watched, had poor food and housing, and were harshly treated. Their morale and levels of output were mediocre or poor. At the peak the forced laborers comprised 20% of the German workforce. Counting deaths and turnover, about 15 million individuals were forced laborers at one point or another during the war. Most came from Poland, Russia and other eastern areas, all were repatriated at war's end. Vichy France was one of the few countries that was able to have much influence on German policies, as it tried to protect the nearly two million French soldiers held as POWs inside Germany. Vichy arranged a deal whereby Germany would release one POW for every three Frenchmen who volunteered to work in Germany. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Threatening Poland. Before coming to power Hitler on his part denounced the right of Poland to independence writing that Poles and Czechs are a rabble not worth a penny more than the inhabitants of Sudan or India. How can they demand the rights of independent states?" and demanding a new partition of Poland with nationalist Russia. Referring to the restoration of the Polish state, Hitler stated, the creation of the Polish state was the greatest crime ever committed against the German nation. In January 1934 Germany signed a non-aggression pact with Poland followed by trade later in the year, while secretly organizing preparations in the following years for invasion of Poland and mass murder of Polish population. By the spring Hitler was openly pondering what inducements he might have to offer to obtain a military alliance with Poland. 
Between 1919 and 1939 Poland pursued a policy of balance between Soviet Union and Nazi Germany and obtained non-aggression treaties with the former. In early 1939 Hitler wanted Poland to join the Anti-Comintern Pact as a junior partner to help with the German invasion of the Soviet Union. Steiner states that Hitler wanted to broker an agreement with Colonel Beck, Poland's all-powerful foreign minister, which would bring Danzig and the Polish Corridor back into the Reich but keep Poland as a friend." Hitler offered Poland a new non-aggression pact and recognition of its current frontiers if it agreed to permit the German inhabited city of Danzig to return to Germany as well as allow an extraterritorial highway connecting Germany proper with Danzig and East Prussia going through Polish territory. This would mean effectively annexing Polish territory while cutting off Poland from the sea and its main trade route. The Polish administration distrusted Hitler and saw the plan as a threat to Polish sovereignty, practically subordinating Poland to the Axis and the anti-Comintern bloc while reducing the country to a state of near servitude as its entire trade would be dependent on Germany. Robert Coulondre, the French ambassador in Berlin in a dispatch to the Foreign Minister Georges Bonnet wrote on 30 April 1939 that Hitler sought, a mortgage on Polish foreign policy, while itself retaining complete liberty of action allowing the conclusion of political agreements with other countries. In these circumstances, the new settlement proposed by Germany, which would link the questions of Danzig and of the passage across the corridor with counterbalancing questions of a political nature, would only serve to aggravate this mortgage and practically subordinate Poland to the Axis and the anti comintern bloc. Warsaw refused this in order to retain its independence. By March Hitler had given up on the Poles and in April began planning an invasion. Hitler's offers are described by Max do Maris as an attempt to buy time before going against Poland. Poland had few friends in the international arena. Two critical developments caught Poland by surprise. At the end of March 1939 Britain and France announced that if Germany invaded Poland they would declare war. In terms of helping Poland militarily in an actual war, everyone realized very little could be done because the British and French military thought that if Germany invaded, Polish resistance would collapse in the early stages of fighting. Neither was thinking of any major offensive action in the West. Their hope was that the threat of a two-front war would deter Germany. Hitler believed that Britain and France were bluffing, but he handled the Soviet problem in late August, by an alliance agreement with Stalin, which included secret provisions to partition Poland—and indeed divide up much of Eastern Europe. The British and French offer was not a bluff. They did indeed declare war on Germany when it invaded Poland on 1 September, but neither was in a position to provide serious help. Poland had a million-man army, but fell far short in terms of leadership, training, and equipment. The Polish military budget was about 2% of Germany's, its commanding general, Marshal Smiley Rydz was not well prepared for the challenge. The Soviet Red Army then invaded Poland without a formal declaration of war on 17 September 1939, immediately after the undeclared war between the Soviet Union and the Empire of Japan at the battles of Kalkangol in the Far East had ended. Poland was then partitioned between Germany and the Soviet Union. Topic. Worldwide fascist groups 
During the war, Nazi Germany cultivated relationships with fascist and extreme right groups in neutral and allied controlled territory such as the Osiwa Brandwag, an Afrikaner paramilitary organization based on the Nazi Party. Italy Allied policy was to be friendly with Benito Mussolini, the fascist dictator of Italy, in the hopes he would either remain neutral or moderate Hitler's expansion plans. However, in May 1939, he joined the Axis with Germany, signing the Pact of Steel. When France was in the last stages of collapse Mussolini entered the war and gained some spoils. He brought along a powerful navy that could challenge the British for control of the Mediterranean. Roosevelt denounced the move. On this tenth day of June, 1940, the hand that held the dagger has struck it into the back of its neighbor. Italy was poorly prepared for war and increasingly fell under Nazi dictation. After initial success in British Somaliland, Egypt, the Balkans despite the initial defeat against Greece, and Eastern Fronts, Italian military efforts failed in North and East Africa, and Germany had to intervene to rescue its neighbour. After the Allies invaded and took Sicily and southern Italy in 1943, the regime collapsed. Mussolini was arrested and the king appointed General Pietro Badoglio as new prime minister. They later signed the armistice of Cassibile and banned the fascist party. However Germany moved in, with the fascists' help, occupying Italy north of Naples. German paratroopers rescued Mussolini and Hitler set him up as head of a puppet government the Italian Social Republic, often called the Salo Republic, a civil war resulted. The Germans gave way slowly, for mountainous Italy offered many defensive opportunities. Britain by 1944 feared that Italy would become a communist state under Soviet influence. It abandoned its original concept of British hegemony in Italy and substituted for it a policy of support for an independent Italy with a high degree of American influence. <laughs> Balkans Hitler, preparing to invade the Soviet Union, diverted attention to make sure the southern or Balkan flank was secure. Romania was under heavy pressure, and was forced to cede 40,000 square miles of territory with 4 million people to the USSR, Hungary and Bulgaria. German troops came in to protect the vital oil fields, Germany's only source of oil besides the USSR. Romania signed the Axis Pact and became a German ally November 1940. So too did Hungary November 1940 and Bulgaria March 1941. Topic: <laughs> Greece In spring 1939, Italy occupied and annexed Albania. Britain tried to deter an invasion by guaranteeing Greece's frontiers. Greece, under the dictatorship of Ioannis Metaxas, to support the Allies' interests rejected Italian demands. Italy invaded Greece on 28 October 1940, but Greeks repelled the invaders after a bitter struggle see Greco-Italian War. By mid-December, 1940, the Greeks occupied nearly a quarter of Albania, tying down 530,000 Italian troops. Metaxas tended to favor Germany but after he died in January 1941 Greece accepted British troops and supplies. 
In March 1941, a major Italian counterattack failed, humiliating Italian military pretensions. Germany needed to secure its strategic southern flank in preparation for an invasion of the USSR. Hitler reluctantly launched the Battle of Greece in April 1941. Axis troops successfully invaded through Yugoslavia, quickly overcoming Greek and, British defenders. Greece was partitioned under German, Italian, and Bulgarian occupation. A Greek government in exile was formed in Cairo it moved to London, and Germany set up a puppet government in Athens. The latter attracted numerous anti-communist elements. Wartime conditions were severe for civilians, famine was rampant as grain production plunged and Germany seized food supplies for its own needs. Malaria became epidemic. The Germans retaliated brutally for sabotage by the Greek resistance. Multiple resistance groups organized, but they often opposed each other. They included the National Republican Greek League EADS, the National and Social Liberation EKKA. Strongest of all was the Communist National Liberation Front EAM, its military arm, the National Popular Liberation Army ELAS, had 50,000 soldiers. The rivalries set the stage for a civil war after the Germans left in September 1944. Yugoslavia and Croatia Yugoslavia signed on as a German ally in March 1941, but within days an anti-Nazi coup, led by Serbians with British help, overthrew the Prince Regent, repudiated the Nazis, and installed the 17-year-old heir as King Peter II. Germany immediately bombarded the capital Belgrade and invaded in force on April 6. Within days the Germans were in full control, the new king fled as did many party leaders. However some prominent politicians supported the Germans, and others were passive. The German invasion set off an extremely bloody, long civil war that killed over a million people. Germany dismembered Yugoslavia, with slices going to Germany and Italy. Kosovo was given to Albania then under Italian control. Macedonia went to Bulgaria and Vojvodina was given over to Hungary. Serbia became a German puppet state and was the cockpit of the resistance. In Slovenia, Germans deported Slovenes to Serbia, enrolled them in the German army, or deported them to Germany to work in war factories and labor camps. In Serbia the Germans set up General Milan Nedić in charge of a government of national salvation, but did not permit it to maintain a regular army or foreign affairs ministry. What was left of Yugoslavia became the new independent state of Croatia NDH, under the rule of Ante Pavlik and his fascist Ustaše party. It became an Axis ally and controlled Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina. The Ustase murdered around 90,000 people, mostly Serbs, along with 37,000 Jews, expelled 250,000, and forced another 200,000 to convert to Catholicism. Two major anti German anti fascist guerrilla movements emerged. The first in Europe self organized anti fascist movement, started in Croatia, partisans led by a Croat Josip Broz Tito had the the initial support from the Kremlin. The Chetniks led by the Serbian Chetnik Colonel Draza Mihailović was loyal to the royal government in exile based in London. Tito's movement won out in 1945, executed its enemies, and reunited Yugoslavia. Japan. 
Japan had conquered all of Manchuria and most of China by 1939 in the Second Sino-Japanese War, but the Allies refused to recognize the conquests. Japan joined the Axis with Germany, but shared little information. Japan depended on imports from the Allies for 90% of its oil, and the cutoff of oil shipments in mid-1941 left Japan with supplies for only a year or two of serious combat by its warships and warplanes unless it came to terms regarding China, or seized oil fields controlled by Britain and the Netherlands. The latter course meant war, and was urged by army officials who had been bloodied in border conflicts and were reluctant to engage the Soviets. Some admirals and many civilians, including Prime Minister Kano Fumamaro, believed that a war with the U.S. would end in defeat. The alternative was loss of honor and power. Diplomats proposed political compromises in the form of the Amao Doctrine, dubbed the Japanese Monroe Doctrine, which would have given the Japanese free reign with regard to China. These proposals were rejected by the U.S., the Japanese Army now demanded a military solution. Topic. Imperial conquests Japan launched its own blitzkriegs in East Asia. In 1937, the Japanese army invaded and captured most of the coastal Chinese cities such as Shanghai. Japan took over French Indochina, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, British Malaya, Brunei, Malaysia, Singapore, as well as the Dutch East Indies, Indonesia. Thailand managed to stay independent by becoming a satellite state of Japan. In December 1941 to May 1942, Japan sank major elements of the American, British and Dutch fleets, captured Hong Kong, Singapore, the Philippines and the Dutch East Indies, and reached the borders of India and began bombing Australia. Japan suddenly had achieved its goal of ruling the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere. Topic. Imperial rule The ideology of Japan's colonial empire, as it expanded dramatically during the war, contained two contradictory impulses. On the one hand, it preached the unity of the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere, a coalition of Asian races, directed by Japan, against the imperialism of Britain, France, the Netherlands, United States, and Europe in general. This approach celebrated the spiritual values of the East in opposition to the crass materialism of the West. In practice, it was a euphemistic title for grabbing land and acquiring essential natural resources. The Japanese installed organizationally minded bureaucrats and engineers to run their new empire, and they believed in ideals of efficiency, modernization, and engineering solutions to social problems. It was fascism based on technology, and rejected Western norms of democracy. After 1945, the engineers and bureaucrats took over, and turned the wartime techno fascism into entrepreneurial management skills. Japan set up puppet regimes in Manchuria Manchuko, and China, proper, they vanished at the end of the war. The Japanese army operated ruthless governments in most of the conquered areas, but paid more favorable attention to the Dutch East Indies. The main goal was to obtain oil, but Japan sponsored an Indonesian nationalist movement under Sukarno. Sukarno finally came to power in the late 1940s after several years of battling the Dutch. 
The Dutch destroyed their oil wells but the Japanese reopened them. However most of the tankers taking oil to Japan were sunk by American submarines, so Japan's oil shortage became increasing acute. Topic: <laughs> Puppet states in China. Japan set up puppet regimes in Manchuria, Manchuko and China, proper, they vanished at the end of the war. Manchuria, the historic homeland of the Manchu dynasty, had an ambiguous character after 1912. It was run by local warlords. The Japanese army seized control in 1931, and set up a puppet state of Manchukuo in 1932 for the 34 million inhabitants. Other areas were added, and over 800,000 Japanese moved in as administrators. The nominal ruler was Puyi, who as a small child had been the last emperor of China. He was deposed during the revolution of 1911, and now the Japanese brought him back in a powerless role. Only Axis countries recognized Manchukuo. The United States in 1932 announced the Stimson Doctrine stating that it would never recognize Japanese sovereignty. Japan modernized the economy and operated it as a satellite to the Japanese economy. It was out of range of American bombers, so its factories continued their output to the end. Manchukuo was returned to China in 1945, when Japan seized control of China proper in 1937-38. The Japanese Central China Expeditionary Army set up the reorganized National Government of China, a puppet state, under the nominal leadership of Wang Qingwei (1883–1944). It was based in Nanjing. The Japanese were in full control, the puppet state declared war on the Allies in 1943. Wang was allowed to administer the international settlement in Shanghai. The puppet state had an army of 900,000 soldiers, and was positioned against the Nationalist Army under Chiang Kai-shek. It did little fighting. Topic. Military defeats The attack on Pearl Harbor initially appeared to be a major success that knocked out the American battle fleet, but it missed the aircraft carriers that were at sea and ignored vital shore facilities whose destruction could have crippled U.S. Pacific operations. Ultimately, the attack proved a long-term strategic disaster that actually inflicted relatively little significant long-term damage while provoking the United States to seek revenge in an all-out total war in which no terms short of unconditional surrender would be entertained. However, as Admiral Yamamoto warned, Japan's six-month window of military advantage following Pearl Harbor ended with the Japanese Navy's offensive ability being crippled at the hands of the American Navy in the Battle of Midway. As the war became one of mass production and logistics, the U.S. built a far stronger navy with more numerous warplanes, and a superior communications and logistics system. The Japanese had stretched too far and were unable to supply the forward bases. Many soldiers died of starvation. Japan built warplanes in large quantity but the quality plunged, and the performance of poorly trained pilots spiraled downward. The Imperial Navy lost a series of major battles, from Midway 1942, to the Philippine Sea 1944, and Lake Gulf 1945, which put American long-range B-29 bombers in range. 
A series of massive raids burned out much of Tokyo and 64 major industrial cities beginning in March 1945 while Operation Starvation seriously disrupted the nation's vital internal shipping lanes. Regardless of how the war was becoming hopeless, the circle around the Emperor held fast and refused to open negotiations. Finally in August, two atomic bombs and the Soviet invasion of Manchuria demonstrated the cause was futile, and Hirohito authorized a surrender whereby he kept his throne. <laughs> Deaths Total Japanese military fatalities between 1937 and 1945 were 2.1 million, most came in the last year of the war. Starvation or malnutrition-related illness accounted for roughly 80% of Japanese military deaths in the Philippines, and 50% of military fatalities in China. The aerial bombing of a total of 65 Japanese cities appears to have taken a minimum of 400,000 and possibly closer to 600,000 civilian lives over 100,000 in Tokyo alone, over 200,000 in Hiroshima and Nagasaki combined, and 80,000 to 150,000 civilian deaths in the Battle of Okinawa, civilian death among settlers who died attempting to return Return to Japan from Manchuria in the winter of 1945 were probably around 100,000. Topic: <inaudible> Finland. Finland fought two major wars against the USSR: the Winter War after the USSR invaded of 1940-41 and the Continuation War of 1941-44, in which Finland teamed with Germany in seeking revenge. It lost both. It fought one small one, the Lapland War to successfully drive German forces out of Lapland in 1944–45, the August 1939 Molotov–Ribbentrop Pact between Germany and the Soviet Union contained a secret protocol dividing much of Eastern Europe and assigning Finland to the Soviet sphere of influence. Finland before 1918 had been a province of Russia, and many Finnish speakers lived in neighbouring parts of Russia. After unsuccessfully attempting to force territorial and other concessions on the Finns, the Soviet Union invaded Finland in November 1939 starting the Winter War. Finland won very wide popular support in Britain and the United States. Soviet success in Finland would threaten Germany's iron ore supplies and offered the prospect of Allied interference in the region. The Soviets overwhelmed the Finnish resistance in the Winter War, and a peace treaty was signed in March 1940. It ceded some Finnish territory to the Soviet Union, including the Karelian Isthmus, containing Finland's second largest city, Vipuri, and the critical defensive structure of the Mannerheim Line. After the Winter War, Finland sought protection and support from the Britain and Sweden without success. Finland drew closer to Germany, first with the intent of enlisting German support as a counterweight to thwart continuing Soviet pressure, and later to help regain lost territories. Finland declared war against the Soviet Union on 25 June 1941 in what is called the Continuation War. To meet Stalin's demands, Britain reluctantly declared war on Finland on 6 December 1941, although no other military operations followed. War was never declared between Finland and the United States, though relations were severed between the two countries in 1944 as a result of the Rati-Ribbentrop Agreement. 
The arms length collaboration with Germany stemmed from a precarious balance struck by the Finns in order to avoid antagonizing Britain and the United States. In the end Britain declared war to satisfy the needs of its Soviet policy, but did not engage in combat against Finland. Finland concluded armistice negotiations with the USSR under strong German pressure to continue the war, while British and American acted in accord with their own alliances with the Soviets. Finland maintained command of its armed forces and pursued war objectives independently of Germany. Germans and Finns did work closely together during Operation Silver Fox, a joint offensive against Murmansk. Finland refused German requests to participate actively in the siege of Leningrad, and also granted asylum to Jews, while Jewish soldiers continued to serve in its army. After Soviet offensives were fought to a standstill, in 1944 Rati's successor as president, Marshal Mannerheim, opened negotiations with the Soviets, which resulted in the Moscow Armistice on 19 September 1944. Under its terms Finland was obliged to expel German troops from Finnish territory, which resulted in the Lapland War. Finland signed a peace treaty with the Allied powers in 1947. Governments in exile Britain welcomed governments in exile to set up their headquarters in London whilst others were set up in neutral or other Allied territory. Recognition for these bodies would vary and change over time. Topic: <inaudible> Poland in exile and underground. When the Polish forces were demolished by Germany in the first 3 weeks of September 1939, the government vanished and most Polish leaders fled to Romania, where they were interred. Other leaders escaped to France and later to London, where the Polish government in exile was set up by General Sikorski. It was recognized by the Allies until 1944. The underground resistance movement formed inside Poland. It nominally reported to the government in exile. During the war, about 400,000 Poles joined the underground Polish Home Army. About 200,000 went into combat on Western fronts in units loyal to the Polish government in exile, and about 300,000 fought under Soviet command in the last stages of the war. Since the start of the war, the body protested on the international stage against the German occupation of their territory and the treatment of the civilian population. In 1940 the Polish Ministry of Information produced a list of those it believed had been murdered by the Nazis. On 10 December 1942, the Polish government in exile published a 16-page report addressed to the Allied governments, titled The Mass Extermination of Jews in German-Occupied Poland. The report contained eight pages of Ratchinsky's note, which was sent to foreign ministers of 26 governments who signed the declaration by United Nations on 1 January 1942. Norway After Germany swept to control in April 1940, the government in exile, including the royal family, was based in London. Politics were suspended and the government coordinated action with the Allies, retained control of a worldwide diplomatic and consular service, and operated the huge Norwegian merchant marine. It organized and supervised the resistance within Norway. 
One long-term impact was the abandonment of a traditional Scandinavian policy of neutrality. Norway became a founding member of NATO in 1949. Norway at the start of the war had the world's fourth largest merchant fleet, at 4.8 million tonnes, including a fifth of the world's oil tankers. The Germans captured about 20% of the fleet but the remainder, about 1,000 ships, were taken over by the government. Although half the ships were sunk, the earnings paid the expenses of the government. Topic: Netherlands. The government in 1940 fled to London, where it had command of some colonies as well as the Dutch Navy and Merchant Marine. When they arrived in London, the government in exile considered itself still neutral but found its desire for the liberation of the Netherlands coinciding with the war aims of the Allies. After the fall of France the Dutch Prime Minister Dirk Jan de Geer advocated negotiating a separate peace between the Netherlands and the Third Reich. Queen Wilhelmina fearing that the loss of the Dutch East Indies to Japan would be a term of any treaty vetoed any agreement. On 3 September 1940 the Queen dismissed her Prime Minister and replaced him with Peter Seward's Gerbrandy, who worked with Churchill and Roosevelt on ways to smooth the path for an American entry. Aruba together with Curaçao the then world-class exporting oil refineries were the main suppliers of refined products to the Allies. Aruba became a British protectorate from 1940 to 1942 and a U.S. protectorate from 1942 to 1945. On November 23, 1941, under an agreement with the Netherlands government in exile, the United States occupied Dutch Guiana to protect the bauxite mines. Topic. Czechoslovakia The Czechoslovak government in exile was an informal title given to the Czechoslovak National Liberation Committee originally created by the former Czechoslovak president, Edward Benes in Paris in October 1939. Unsuccessful negotiations with France for diplomatic status, as well as the impending Nazi occupation of France, forced the committee to withdraw to London in 1940. The body was eventually considered, by those countries that recognized it, as the legal continuation of the First Republic of Czechoslovakia. Belgium The German invasion lasted only 18 days in 1939 before the Belgian army surrendered. The king remained behind, but the government escaped to France and then to England in 1940. Belgium was liberated in late 1944. Belgium had two holdings in Africa the very large colony of the Belgian Congo and the mandate of Rwanda Arundi. The Belgian Congo was not occupied and remained loyal to the Allies as a useful economic asset. The government in exile sold £3.4 million of uranium ore from the Congo to the US for the atomic bomb. Troops from the Belgian Congo participated in the East African campaign against the Italians. The colonial force publique also served in other theatres alongside British forces. Topic: Yugoslavia in exile. Yugoslavia had a weak government in exile based in London that included King Peter. 
However, power inside the country was divided three ways between the Germans and their allies, and two Serbian resistance groups. The royalist anti-communist Chetniks under Draza Mihailović, was nominally under the control of the government in exile. Chetniks were Serbians opposed to the Nazis but sometimes did collaborate with the Germans and Ustasa in their fierce guerrilla battles with the National Liberation Army, a communist-controlled resistance headed by Josip Broz Tito. Tito's strength grew in 1943, and Mihailović and the monarchists fell far behind. Churchill reversed course in December 1943, ended his support for the forces of Mihailović, and backed instead Tito. The government in exile followed suite and supported Tito. Tito drove out the Germans in 1945, repudiated the government in exile, liquidated the Mihailović forces. This allowed the formation of a communist state of Yugoslavia that was independent of Moscow, with Tito in full control. Korea Based in the Chinese city of Shanghai and later Chongqing the Provisional Government of the Republic of Korea acted as the Korean government in exile from 13 April 1919 until the Republic of Korea was established in 1948. List of all war declarations and other outbreaks of hostilities Regarding type of war outbreak fourth column A Topic Attack without a declaration of war U State of war emerged through ultimatum, WD. Topic: <laughs> State of war emerged after formal declaration of war, D. Diplomatic breakdown leading to a state of war. In some cases a diplomatic breakdown later led to a state of war. Such cases are mentioned in the comments. Main source, Swedish Encyclopedia. Bonnier's Lexicon. 15 volumes from the 1960s, article. Andra Waldskriget. The Second World War. Volume 1 of 15, table in columns 461-462. Each page are in two columns, numbering of columns only. Topic. See also. Causes of World War II. Cold War. Diplomatic history of World War One. European foreign policy of the Neville Chamberlain government. Germany–Soviet Union relations before 1941 International relations 1919–1939 Military production during World War II <laughs> Notes <laughs>